In this exercise we're going to look at the Nelson rules. Now the Nelson rules are a set of eight decision rules used for detecting out of control or non-random conditions on control charts. These rules are applied to a control chart uh, on which the magnitude of some variable is plotted against time. Okay, the rules are based on the mean value and standard deviation of the samples. That makes sense. So it's sort of uh, a lot of this actually to do with the normal distribution. And in fact, this is uh, if you're familiar with the normal distribution and some basic probability, you should have a fair idea of some of the rules. Okay, so discuss any four of these rules and how they would be used to detect out of control processes. Uh, support your answer with sketches. Sketches should be plural. Also, actually, just a sort of quick remark that this is uh, four rules. Okay, so uh, what the market scheme might usually go for one is state the rule. This is for each of the four rules and state the rule. Two, uh, sketch, okay, uh, of a control chart where the rule is broken, and three, the probability, okay, the quick discussion of the probability of each of these events. So it actually, I would work it out as four by three, okay. So this would be a twelve mark question, okay, rather than four by two. So four by two is essentially just a typo. Okay. Now, in your answer, you may, may make reference to the following properties of the normal distribution. So, uh, essentially, within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean, okay, uh, we would find 68.27% of the uh, observations. Uh, between minus two standard deviations and plus two standard deviations from the mean, we would find 95 percent or not point nine five four five and within three standard deviations of the mean okay on either side we would find ninety nine point seven three percent not uh, not point nine nine seven three okay uh, that's worth bearing in mind okay so what I'm gonna do is like, let's look at some of the rules here just bring up my chart so this is the rule one and uh, this is what they commonly call the three sigma rule okay and it's essentially uh, the one point outside three sigma or three standard deviations. Okay, so what uh, it actually in uh, in this case there's actually two points that are outside three standard deviations, but it's just to sort of emphasize that it is either side. So what is the probability of this point being uh, essentially uh, being outside? What's the probability of a point being outside three standard deviations? Okay, so if you consider, okay, that within one, uh, I'm just going to sort of open a new page here. Within, one, uh, let's just draw this here. Okay, uh, the center line is here. So this is a uh, mu. Uh, this is the upper limit, and this is mu plus three sigma, okay. And the lower line down here is mu minus three sigma, okay. Sigma standard deviations. So essentially, what we're told is that ninety nine point seven three percent of the values should fall uh, within the, those barriers, okay, plus or minus three standard deviations. But what is the probability of being outside? So, well, first off, let's consider the complement. 1 minus 0 0.9973. Just write it as a decimal rather than as a percentage. And that is equal to 0 0.0027. Okay. Now, that's the probability of being outside three standard deviations. Uh, what is the probability of being above uh, uh, mu, uh, mu plus three sigma? It's half of that. Remember, this is the probability of being outside. I'll just bring that down a bit. Is means either above or below. So if it's just above, it is half of that. Not point not not two seven divided by two. That is not point not not one three five. Okay. So that's uh, essentially um, almost one sixth of a percent. Okay, not even six, one seventh of a percent uh, probability of being on outside one of those limits. So essentially, the probability of being here outside three standard deviations is this value here. Okay, likewise, the probability of being down here 
is also 0 0.00135, okay? So it's essentially the complement, okay, of 99.73 and divided by 2, just to sort of split it up for both uh, uh, both above 3 sigma, plus 3 sigma, and below minus 3 sigma, okay? So that's the first one. Let's consider the second one now. Uh, rule 2. Uh, nine points on same side of center line. Okay, so if you consider that there is this side of the center line, this is the above side. Okay, uh, that's not how you spell above. It's above, and then below the center line. That there is a 50 50 percent chance of being above or below the uh, center line. So, by the way, this is nine points in a row. I should add that nine points in a row, the same side of the center line. So, this is like almost like a coin toss experiment that you get nine heads in a row. So, this is a very simple probability. So, uh, first off, let's just be clear it's nine points in a row on the same side of the center line. Okay, so let's say it's nine points in a row above the center line. It doesn't could be below the center line. The probability of being above the center line is not 0 0.50. Okay, it's just a 50 50 uh, random occurrence. But for it to happen nine times in a row, that would be 0 0.5 to the power of nine. And working that out in the calculator, uh, it's a very simple calculation that you would. Uh, let's just sort of, I'm just going to pause it here and calculate it. Not 0.5 to the power of 9 okay, is not 0.00195, okay? So it's less, it's a fraction of a percent, it's about one-fifth of one percent, or one in 500 chance, okay, of getting three points on the same side of the center line, uh, sorry, sorry, nine points on the same side of the center line, and nine points in a row. So that's the second of the rules. Now I'm going to move on to rule 7. Now the reason is I, I've sort of skipped a few rules because rule 7 and 8 can be explained uh, very simply with um, normal distribution. If you six, uh, Some of the, the other ones in between, they are a little bit more advanced. So just, for, uh, sort of, to, just to sort of get used to these, I'm just going to uh, pick 1, 2, 7 and 8. Uh, so I'm going to go to 7 here, and 15 points within one standard deviation of the center line, okay? So everything is in this little zone here, where we are within one standard deviation, oops, one standard deviation of the center line. So we're actually not dispersed at all, okay? We uh, we are quite packed, quite tightly packed uh, in terms of the center line. Now, what do we do here? So what the, uh, this rule will help us here. The probability of being within one standard deviation of the mean is 0 0.6827. Okay, so just sort of like I described it here, where is it? Uh, within one standard deviation, I'm going to use this one here. So within one standard deviation plus sigma and minus sigma, and this is mu here, uh, this would account for 68, I'll do that in red pen, 68.27%, okay, being within that, that range of values there, okay, and so that's sort of a, not to be, not unexpected, that you get values like 68.27% of values should be within one standard deviation but to get them 15 times in a row that's the question okay so I'll just close that one down so the to get them 15 times in a row hmm what's the probability of that not 0.6827 to the power of 15 okay it's the probability of n independent events happening n, uh, 15 times in a row so uh, it's a very simple independent uh, independent events. So 0 0.6827 to the power of 15 is 0 0.0326. 
Okay, it's about a third of a, per of a percent chance of that happening. Okay, and finally, uh, by the way, it doesn't have to be in either side. So we're going to either side of the center line. Okay, it doesn't matter which side. It could be bo uh, both sides. Whereas when I talked about uh, two, they all had to be on the same side. Okay, so rule eight. Eight points in a row outside one standard deviation. So these uh, points here are consistently outside one standard deviation. So starting from here, we have eight points in a row outside one standard deviation. Okay. So if the probability of being within inside one standard deviation is not 0.6827, the probability of being outside uh, one standard deviation is not is uh, one minus not 0.6827, okay? Or in other words, not 0.3173. Okay, and for it, this to happen eight times in a row, okay, we just get multiply, uh, calculate that to the power of eight, okay, and working that out, what we would get is, okay, uh, I'll just uh, see if I have room to write it here somewhere. I'll do it here. Not point zero 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 one zero. Okay, it's a, f a extremely small number. Okay, so um, that's four of the rules. Now, there's actually other rules that you could talk about, but they're a little bit more complicated to explain. With um, the, we need to start bringing stuff like time series analysis and binomial distributions and all that. So, uh, using basic probability in the normal distribution, you should be able to explain 1, 2, 7, and 8 without any problem. Okay? And use those of uh, probabilities there. Okay, and just as a remark, again, what uh, I sort of said it earlier, you get one mark for the rule, one mark for the sketch, and one mark for the probability. So it's actually 4 by 3. Okay. End of presentation.